So yes, we believe in a gospel that brings the change of having that new man. But no, it is not automatic for you to walk in that new man. It, it's, just, it's just not. So that's why you can't look at the outward works just alone to see. Because anybody can do outward works whether they're saved or not. Just an appearance. Just having, a, a, you know, infiltrators do it all the time. Think about wolves in sheep's clothing. They could come into a church. They can say all the right things. They can go out soul winning. They can say they're reading the Bible and doing everything else, right? And appear to be like a sheep, but they're not. Why? Because they don't have the new man. They're just mimicking and, and imitating what they think, you know, what, what we should be doing by obeying God's commandments. But they don't have that new man. So you can't go based off of that. All we can, we can really, truly go off of is what comes out of a man's mouth, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if you want to get a glimpse into someone's heart, whether or not they're believing in Christ, you could only go based off of their words. I mean, you, you like I said, if you, if you were to take someone like me and just look at me and look at my life, There would be nothing. I wasn't going to church. What would make you think I'm a Christian? I wasn't reading my Bible. I was hanging out and just doing just like the world does. I was walking as other Gentiles walk. That's how I was walking. I wasn't being instructed, hey, don't walk like other Gentiles walk. I needed to be plugged into a good church. I needed to hear from the Word of God. I needed to grow. I needed to, to be able to, to hear this stuff, to walk in the Spirit. But I wasn't getting that. But that doesn't make a person unsaved. And that's the bottom line. So is it possible for a person to be saved and still walk as other Gentiles walk? Yes, it is. Otherwise, you wouldn't be admonished not to do it. Of course it is. And that's, and that's the bottom line where people have a problem with what we teach and believe. Oh, so you just mean uh, anyone can be saved. Yeah, anyone can be saved. Because it's, it's what's on the inside. And, and you know what? If you really want to know to the best of your ability if someone's saved, talk to that person. Bring up the gospel. Ask them what they believe. And I think the other reason why people don't like it is because they may talk to people that say, oh yeah, well I believe in Jesus. Right? And how many people do we run into that will say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Right? If you just ask them, hey, do you believe in Jesus? The vast majority of people say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Does that mean they're saved? No. Now, you say, well, what do you mean that doesn't mean they're saved? Pastor, you just said that all we have to do to be saved is believe in Jesus. Because people will say things, but that's not really what they're trusting in their heart. If you just, and then and, and how you word the question makes a big difference too. Because if you ask someone, do you believe in Jesus? Who's going to deny Jesus that is, falls under any branch of Christianity. I mean, you could say to a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon, anybody, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Right. I mean, you could talk to people who aren't even Christian and they, and they might tell you yes. Right. Yeah, I believe in Jesus, sure. A Muslim could tell you they believe in Jesus. Get specific with the questioning, though. Well, do you believe, you know, what do you believe it takes to be saved? That's a different question. Oh, well, you got to do right. You got to, okay, well, that demonstrates they're not believing in Jesus the way the Bible says you need to believe in Jesus. It's just a vain word saying you believe in Jesus at that point because you're not trusting in him alone to save you. So when people talk to those other people, they think that we might believe that, well, they're all just saved then because they all say they believe in Jesus. No, we don't believe that. But half the time, these people that want to criticize your beliefs or our beliefs, they don't take enough time to even understand what the point is. And, and you know, I'll give you this much too. Uh, you, everybody ought to be careful about this. And this is, this is a total side point. But if you want to have credibility with people, don't misrepresent where people stand on things. I'm all for calling out and making the connections and, and, and you know, getting all the dots together to, to call out false doctrine and say, okay, 
you know, here's ultimately what this person's believing in when you follow it to their end, even though, you know, like, what I mean by that is saying someone believes in work salvation, even though they're not going to say they believe in work salvation, right. right? There's nothing wrong with saying, well, ultimately this is work salvation. So let's say you have someone who believes you could lose your salvation. You know, I believe it's all by grace, but I mean, if you kill a minute murder, then of course God's going to take it away from you. We could connect the dots and say, well, then that person believes in works to be saved. Wow, what do you mean? I don't believe in works. So they might get offended by that and not like it, but we're not misrepresenting what they believe because then you can explain, well, here's how you believe in works. And be very clear and say, see, well, if it's by grace, but then you end up not obeying the law to lose it, then what you're saying is, what you're implying is that you need to keep the law in order to stay saved. If I have to keep the law in order to stay saved, that's the works of the law. But the Bible says, therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So now you have a problem, you have a contradiction because you're inserting, you're adding this element of works to salvation. So you believe in a works-based salvation. And he said, you know, you, you could prove that even further with other scriptures. But um, real simply, being able to articulate this is, this is what you believe in, this is why it's false. Don't go misrepresenting people, though, and just making up just random claims. Because what's going to happen is for the person, you know, you may be able to deceive a bunch of people or people might just agree with you or believe what you're saying because they like you or they agree with you in general. But what's going to happen is if they find out that's actually not what that person believes, you're going to lose credibility and then no one's going to want to listen to what you have to say.